think that's why you might also be more quiet, but he's receiving some IV right now and, and is okay. Um, but I can bring him back later. They're just kind of reassessing her old blood to just to make sure his old blood to ensure female health was fine. Um, but we got our results back and he has Addison disease. Okay, well, yeah. it's the best out of the other options. Exactly. From all the options, this is kind of the best one. So it's a disease where, are you okay? Oh, I know it's so, so emotional. One second, I have probably some Kleenex. Oh, I don't. Oh, there we are. I'm so sorry. But it's kind of a good news. That's good news, honey. Because that disease can be treated. It's treatment for life. So we cannot stop them. It's forever. But usually they're very well managed with that right. medication. And um, just to give you an idea, like the Addison disease is a disease where our adrenal glands, where our two little glands we have over our kidney, and that has the same glands, they're supposed to produce the cortisol, which is a stress hormone. So whenever we have a stressful event, this hormone is produced in high quantity to help us kind of like deal with the stress and the body stay like able to, to deal with that. But if their glands are for some reason weak and don't produce enough of that hormone, then whenever they have a stressful event, they kind of collapse. They not able to deal with that. Sometimes they can have a lot of vomiting and diarrhea. Sometimes they can have just just pass out, like they lay by. It's, they all have different uh, kind of presentation, but these changes are like very compatible with that disease and they, their blood glucose will come in, especially for a little dog like this. I don't have any reserve. Um, so that kind of all makes sense. Um, there's two hormones that are produced. Well, actually there's two hormones that are produced by the adrenal gland. One of them is just the endogen, like the sexual hormones, but it's not really a problem if they're not produced enough. And usually they're not deficient in that hormone. Another hormone is the cortisol, the one we talked about. And then the third one is the, called the mineral corticoid. It's an hormone that will balance the electrolytes in our body. So the sodium, the potassium, and all of those that keep them like within the normal range. And if they don't produce enough, sometimes what we'll see is like, this, like they're all unbalanced, which was not yet the cases for Levi. The electrolyte were still within normal limit. However, they were kind of like very like on the edge of being abnormal. So now we're kind of debating for sure the treatment for Addison is all is to supplement them with those hormones that are lacking. So we give them fake cortisol, which is actually cortisone, that root like that drug, but we give them very low dose. I don't know if you know anybody who had cortisone in his life, but there's such low dose that they don't have the side effect that the people will usually experience. So just to reassure, because sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want my dog to get cortisol. We give very low dose and usually they're not very symptomatic. They don't have lots of side effects. And then sometimes we also have to supplement them with the mineral corticoid if they're deficient in that one too. Or sometimes they start just being deficient in one and with time they become deficient with the second one. So we still have to keep a close eye on them because maybe now he doesn't need it, but in one week he will, especially seeing the electrolytes being like so close to being abnormal, but yet normal, still normal. And We've been rechecking like twice a day these electrolytes just to see. And every time we're checking, it's getting closer and closer to the like margin. So we're doing just a recheck right now. And if they are abnormal, then we'll have to answer. It means that you need it. Yeah. If they're still in the gray zone, we'll decide. Because sometimes we're like, like what if in two days it's abnormal and then they just really need it. Sometimes we give it. And there's two different medications that can be given to treat Addison. Um, one of them is um, a medication that contains both hormones together. So the pro of that medication is that it's a pill that you give every day. But the cons is that sometimes they need more of one hormone and less of the other hormones. And then if we, it's harder to like, if we need more of one, but then we cannot increase the dose enough because then we'll have to increase the dose for both hormones. Sometimes it just makes management a little bit more difficult. But I mean, a lot of dogs are owners elected to do that one and it's still working okay. 
The second one is a little bit more of a favorite, but it's to give the two almonds in a separate, like, separate like way. So almond the cortisol, the supplement in a pill, little pill that you're giving every day. And then the mineral corticoid, the other hormone for the electrolytes, you give them as a little injection that you come and do either here at your bed, whatever is the closest from home, every month. And even with time, sometimes you start, we start showing you how to do that. When we find the perfect dose, you can even do it at home if you're comfortable with the little injection. So little injection under the skin. So it's pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, so once we have kind of good dose and we're comfortable, sometimes we just give you the vial and you do that at home once a month. So what's good about that is that if, for example, we buy needs lots of like mineral corticoid, but not lots of cortisol, then we can easily make adjustment for the two. So that's why it's kind of a little bit of our favorite, but also we understand this one is like for a small dog like Levi, though it's probably not that much expensive. For a large big dog, sometimes it's becoming more expensive, but I think for a small dog like Levi, we, we would be pretty okay. Um, but yeah, it's treatment lifelong, but usually very good prognosis. And the only thing we say is that if they have another stressful, for example, you're planning on going to the grooming like in two weeks, on the day before, the same day of the event and the next day, we just increase a little bit the, the dose of their cortisol to kind of help them deal with that stress, stressful event that is coming. But most of the time, they, once they have a diagnosis, the chance for them to have other like episodes and crisis is very low because they're being medic, like they have the medication for it. So give you a very good prognosis and they can have like a normal quality of life and quantity of life. They just need a little bit of medication for the rest of their life. Um, but it's still much better prognosis than like a tumor that we talked about or an insulinoma, like those are not good prognosis. And the, the ultrasound, we couldn't find any mass or anything. The only thing that they said, the adrenal gland are tiny, 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 which is no big surprise now that we have the rest of the test that they're so tiny. And then they see the liver is also a little bit tiny, but could just be like a greed variation because Levi is a tiny dog. So could just have a tiny liver that go with it. Um, so the end, they couldn't find any like other signs of liver disease. So, so far I think like, of course, we'll see with times if he keeps having episode and the, and the rest is well, the Addison is well controlled, then maybe we'll start looking for a liver disease. But I think at this point, at this point, it's okay to say, well, we have a very good reason now that explain everything. So we can like work with that one first and then see if we need to continue. But I don't want to like, to go crazy with the test when we yeah, have yeah. the answer right now. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our um, findings for today. And I know just give you like a bunch of information. So tell me your questions. Uh, so what are the long-term side effects? Of this? Yeah, so there's not a lot of side effects. The steroids sometimes can increase their urination, water intake, and um, appetite, which wouldn't be a bad thing because yeah. Like, I think that has been picky all of his life. Um, but usually at the dose we give it, it's not really a problem because we're going to give like what we say physiological, physiological dosage, which is actually, we're just replacing what the body's not producing. When we go higher with the dose, those effects are more like obvious, but not with the dose we're going to use. And for the first week, we always use a, a higher dosage to be like aggressive at the beginning. So maybe you'll see a little bit more of those side effects, but after a week, we'll start decreasing it more to that, like the maintenance dose. So then we don't, won't really see those side effects. Um, sometimes you can gain a little bit of weight too with that, but with those low dose, it shouldn't. Um, and then the mineral corticoid, like the injection, if we injected that, oh, the electrolytes are starting to get a little bit too close to the abnormal and we want to give the injection, usually it doesn't really have a side effect. Like we work very well and say well tolerated medication. Of course, if we give too much or not enough, that could be, especially if we give too much, that could become a problem. But we always start with the lower dose and then you're coming like the first few have to say the first few weeks sometimes do you live very far away from Arlington so we're about 45 minutes 45 minutes okay I mean your vet sometimes is okay to do the management of that if they're comfortable if they're not we're happy to see Levi like every night because he's so sweet but like the first time usually you need to come like 
about every like week or so month for the first few months and then once we have a nice dose we can but we just want to start too strong on the dose and then having problems so that's why we start very conservative to avoid side effects okay so his his rechecks are going to be weekly for a while then yeah probably for the first few weeks and then uh monthly and then every six months like once the fine dose the good dose is fine it's just like it's fine sometimes it's like every like twice a year or something like that more than that do you think his appetite will pick up hopefully because addison is one of the symptoms of the disease they can have like waxinating vomiting waxinating diarrhea low appetite that is also far like very fluctuating so that could help with the appetite if if it was a contributing factor maybe it's just a picky dog but can definitely be that too yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, thank hey, you. Oh, he's really much more awake like now. You just wanted some blue guys. Oh, yes. yes. Are you excited? Oh, I know. He's like, get a crack the bag. Come to me. So he has a little warm oak bag here as well, just because his temperature was a little cold. So don't put it directly on his skin, but through the blanket is perfect. Yeah, he normally, he, he's so, so little weight, he normally sleeps on a heating pad because he gets really? cold. So, he's so tiny. He gets cold right. easily. All right, well, there's a little heating pad for him there. And I'm sure he's happy. And the extra is better. Oh, thank you so much, Kate. Thank you. Of course, stay with us. Well, do you have? Oh, take my chair. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. You look better. <laughs> much more awake. Oh, hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. And then with the, like he received his first dose of steroids, like just now. So hopefully that, with that in his system, maybe he won't, need, won't be so sensitive. Like like right now we stopped the glucose and he already had an episode. But hopefully with that in his system, he won't be dependent of that dextrose supplementation. What makes that change so quickly? Like he's always been a picky eater. He's always been underweight, but it's... And occasionally he he would have maybe two episodes a year, but now it's like all of a sudden he can't maintain a sugar level. Yeah, and those adrenal like reserve they keep getting lower and lower. Um, so maybe we just reach that point where we have no more reserve anymore. Um, the diagnosis like the cortisol both time. So how we diagnose that? We check their cortisol level, and it was too low to read, and then we give them an injection of something that really kind of like have them release everything they can have in their body and it was still totally good. So it's quite 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 low. Quite low. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how much longer will we have to stay there for? Yeah, so it's always depend how quickly they respond to treatment. You receive his very first dose right now and then we'll decide whether or not he needs something else for the other hormones. Uh, but usually if they're like start feeling well again, start eating, then they can sometimes go home within like 24, 48 hours or so, something like that. But if tomorrow is happy, is off dextrose and maintaining a good blood glucose, eating, then I could send him home. If tomorrow is like still not eating like perfectly or still a little bit calm, maybe we'll keep him another 24. But most of the time, 24 to 48 hours after we figure it out is what we expect. All right. Yeah. Where he's gonna live. Oh, poor thing. But yeah, hopefully that dose of cortisol, we kind of like, yeah, just have the answer. So it's in his system right now, and hopefully it's gonna have an effect pretty soon. But he really, like, just, just had it. And, um, yeah, but maybe tomorrow if he's well, I might stop that and give him, like, a, a test. Can he do well without it now? Yeah. <laughs> you guys have any other questions? I think that's it. Do you have any other questions? Then? I don't think so. No, just, just get him. You did better, you can come home. Yeah, we will. And if you, yeah, if other question pops up at home or during dinner, never hesitate to give a call back, okay? And we can go over your questions. Otherwise, if everything stays pretty much the same, stable, we'll talk in the morning, um, same about the same time as this morning, around like 8 to 9.30. Um, and if anything changed concerning overnight, I'll give you a call right away. Um, and yeah, and then I don't know if, did you know if they end up having the blood gas results? Oh, yes. 
Life for okay. Okay. So they're still okay right now. Okay. Again, close to the limits, but still okay. So I think we're just going to tonight round, kind of touch base with like faculties, residents, just kind of have a brainstorm our body and decide whether or not we want to be a little bit more aggressive and start him out right away on both hormones, or if we sell a little bit more conservative and only one of the two hormones, which we already know he needs, and kind of closely follow up on the electrolytes to see if we end up needing them. Um, but I'll, I'll let you know uh, what we decide uh, whenever we have a decision, okay? Okay. okay. All right. Sounds, Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Of course. And I'll give you some more time with Levi. Um, how long would you like with him? How would you? Well, uh, probably you want just a few more minutes with him, and then I'll let him go get rest. Okay. Okay. So maybe we'll come back in like five, ten minutes? Yeah. Something like that? Fine. Okay. Perfect. We'll All right. Then. Thanks so thanks much. Thanks so much. Oh, I think that's a little better.